everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new on my channel. I'm Kat Coloring and today I'm going to make a beginner tutorial. It's been a while since I've made a beginner tutorial and I thought that uh, since this book Berettelser from Atlantis, Mola book illustrated of Hannah Carlson, my attempt to speak Swedish, I am Danish, not Swedish, but it's called Tales from Atlantis by Hannah Carlson. Uh, I thought that I would make a beginner tutorial from this book. I have just researched it and it's released in the English version on January 23rd, according to Amazon. So a lot of you have waited to buy this book when the English edition arrives and it will so do so in a couple of weeks. So I thought that perhaps we should take a closer look on this book. And I know there has been a lot of flip throughs. You can find that on several YouTube channels. So I'm not going to make a flip through. You can see that because it's called Tales from Atlantis, there are a lot of ocean themed um, pages in this one. And uh, some uh, from uh, ancient Greece. It was thought that Atlantis was an ancient Greek sort of civilization. Uh, they lived on an island. Atlantis and it sunk into the ocean after a volcanic eruption or something. And a lot of people have speculated about where Atlantis was. Was it in the Atlantic Ocean or the Mediterranean Sea or what? We don't know. But we know that ancient historians actually mention Atlantis um, in ancient sources. Uh, some of the Greek historians at least do. So there has been a lot of talk about this mysterious island. So, as you can see here, we have mermaids and we have fish and jewelry and more mermaids and also some double pages, I think. Um, very nice. You can see here ruins under the water. We have fish and we have lots of plants and stuff here can also see here on this page we have some corals also. Uh, it's almost like sort of a coral reef here. So there are a lot of opportunities to uh, color under sea life here. So how do you do this when you um, want to color a page like this, for example? I want to color this page, so I'm going to be using this one for my tutorial. So how do you do it? Well, you um, try to uh, pick the right mediums, the right art supplies, I would say, to this one. So should this be colored with coloring pencils, with pens, with gel pens, with uh, watercolors or what? And then you will have to feel the paper. The paper is quite smooth in this book. And um, it's not as thick as I would want it if I had to use watercolors. So I'm not quite sure that I want to use watercolors with this book. Mm. So I have decided to use these. These are the Faber Castell 48 Soft Pastels, some sort of pastel chalks. And I bought them a couple of years ago and I have actually never used them. But I think it's about high time that I use them. And you can see they have uh, some very nice colors here. And um, I'm not going to be using these chalk sticks here for the complete drawing, but I want to have some sort of a background here colored with these. And then I will use coloring pencils for the rest of it. So I will have to choose some colors that are sea like some, which means some blue, or bluish or perhaps turquoise or teal. So I am thinking about some of these colors. We'll have to remember that when you are in the ocean, the light comes from above and depending on how deep it is, if it's really deep, there's not a lot of light, but there's so much life here with plants and so on. So I think it's not very deep. So there must be some sort of light coming through from above, which means that I don't have to use so many dark colors for the background or for the water. So I think that this is perhaps a bit too light 
or perhaps not. Um, and then is it blue water or is it what if, if it's in a river it's more greenish or is it dark or light or turquoise or clear blue or dark blue um, I have some colors here and I think that I want to test them oh it's quite messy this one so um, I think I want to test these colors before I decide exactly what colors I'm going to be using so I'm going to test these uh, pastel chalks and um, as you can see here I have already readied the three darker colors so it's quite easy you take a for example scissor you can also use a scalpel and then you just scratch a bit to get some of the chalk and then you take this one and you just smush it and then you can see the color oh that's very light I can hardly see it I'm not quite sure I think that this one is too light and it's quite messy as you can see so um, perhaps you should have a uh, moist cloth beneath beside you when you do this and then I will have to take my book and just look at it and um, you can see that the color when you smush it it's not quite as dark as this uh, pastel uh, chalk itself it gets lighter so you can see here from this very light blue you can hardly see it on the paper so I don't think that I am I mean this is not white paper it has some sort of a yellowish tone and it's more creamy white um, but I'm not sure that this one will do I think it's too light this one I really like because it has a really light tone when you smush it uh, and these are darker but not too dark so I think that I will not use this one but I will use this one for the lighter areas uh, this one with the plants and then the blue one here for the rest of the water but in the middle this lighter one I think so three colors I will use so now I just have to um, get the color into the book so I have identified the three colors it's light phthalo blue cobalt turquoise and middle phthalo blue I'm going to be using as background and um, as you can see I have uh, prepared this table with a newspaper underneath because it is messy to work with these pastels so I want my book to be here and then I think that I will work straight in the book you have to have a uh, an eraser ready or rubber ready I have this one it's quite good actually so that you can remove the chalk from the rest of the drawing so it's only in the background um, and it's quite small spaces so um I think that um, I want it to be directly in the book and not on paper and then transfer it so here goes And um, I'm just going to, to be checking because it's, I mean, Hannah Carlson's books are wonderful, but there are so many things and items. So it's a bit difficult to, um, to get a complete picture 
of what is background and what is not. I'm just going to be coloring this. I so, hmm, this is also background. Um, I think that I will need a little bit here. Just a little bit. No need to exaggerate. Yeah, and I know it looks a lot messier than the end result. You have to have very good nerves when you do this, I must say. Um, I think that all of this down here is not actually water. I think it's the bottom of the sea. You can see with the sand, perhaps some cliffs. You can see the plants growing out of this, the fish, some corals. Like it's a coral reef. Um, so I perhaps a little bit here, but you can see it really gives you this very nice background. So if you have had to do this in pencils, um, I think it would be um, a lot more difficult. Let's see here. It's and then you have the background, and it's not too much. You can still see the rest of the drawing. I think perhaps because this is where the plants are, so I think some more bluish tones here. Just take a fresh one of these and. Um, This is where you have to really keep calm and um, try not to panic because you think, oh my, I am ruining the entire drawing like this. No, we are not. So, yeah. And I don't want too much blue. And you could also mix some of the blue here with the turquoise. So I have to get some blue down here. As I said, it's actually quite difficult here. So you just have to, um, and then you can see I'm just smushing here without adding any more chalk because I want this to be the lighter area. Um, and then I keep on checking if I have missed something because it is difficult to see where the water begins and the other things end. I think it's just water here. So I will continue here with this cobalt turquoise. I think it's all the way down here. And remember that we add coloring pencil color as the next step. So, yeah, more dark here and more light in here. Still think it's perhaps a bit too light here. I want it a little bit darker here. Oh my. I think it's time for the blue color here. And I will, yeah, smush it. Mm. It 
really is difficult to see. Uh, I don't think that was water. Well, just have to remove it after with the rubber. Okay, and now for the last color here. The light phthalo blue. Oh, it needs a little bit color. But you can see here, perhaps there is room for some of the paper to be almost white. Hardly any color on it, as you can see here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, perhaps a little more here. So you can see here a lot of light from above, uh, hardly any color, and then to the sides, um, more color. Oops, I think that I had forgotten something here, it's also here. So, um, this is some sort of an ancient vase, and we have sand and plants here. Um, well, I think this is it. I really think that uh, that was the water. So, that was it. So, the next step is to use your eraser. Um, to very carefully, oh, I'm not good with my left hand, remove the color here from the plots and the ruins and the fish and so on. So this is going to be taking me a while. And then I have to add a fixative to keep the chalk on the drawing so I don't get smushed. So um, there's no reason for me to film it. You can just see the result. So use the eraser to remove excess chalk and then use a fixative. Well, I applied the fixative and I know that some say that you can use hairspray but I don't use hairspray myself and I don't have any hairspray in my house so I have bought this fix and uh, just sprayed it on and uh, try to do it in a place where there is a good ventilation or outside perhaps because it doesn't smell very good and um, please be careful don't get it in your eyes or on your skin, wash your hands, and then you can see I just let it dry and I just put a piece of paper behind it because I think it was a bit too wet and I wouldn't risk ruining the other pages here, but you can see it has dried very nicely and now I can work with the rest of the drawing and not be afraid to smudge because it's completely sealed behind this fixative. So, now we can concentrate on the rest of the coloring. And I think I want to start with the plants, you can see up here, and some of the corals. And I have decided that I want the plants in the sides here to be a bit darker. So I have uh, chosen my Prismacolors and I have chosen Kelp Green PC1090 and also olive green PC911 for the darker parts. So let's get started. And um, you can see I want to use the dark color, the darkest color, kelp green, 
here in the dark areas, so I will just start coloring here. Where I imagine there would be some kind of shadow. And also here. So basically, just any way you think there will be some sort of a shadow and where these plants overlap. And as the light comes from here, I think that there's more dark to this side than the side turning towards the light. So some of the darker colors here. And then you just take the olive green. And perhaps we're going to need a third color, a more light color. And remember, don't color in on all these bubbles. I find that if you have colored them with some darker color it's much more difficult to um to color them with white even the posca has to to take some layers before you can make it look light again so Oh, and I just did it. So, I think that I will find a lighter color, and I think that perhaps it should be the sap green light, not the pale sage. You can see I am using this uh, color family chart from colorwithclair.com, and I always use this when I choose colors. So you can see here, <clears throat> that the olive green and kelp green are in the same color family, uh, the Prussian green also, and then if you want the lighter colors, it's either sap green light or pale sage, but I think that pale sage is too light for, I want this to be more dark, so I think that the sap green light would be a good choice to add a little lighter color, but not too much. 
which means that I have to um, find this color and um, then use it with the other two colors. So I have found my Sep Green Light PC120, rather used, you can see. And um, now I'm going to add some lighter tones to these plants, but we have to remember that this is the ocean. We have some light coming down, but when you look at ocean pictures, photos taken from underwater, have to remember that when you go deeper into the water, there is a blitz light when you take pictures. So when you look at all these awesome, beautiful underwater photos on the internet, when you research coral reef, for example, then the highlights in the corals, plants, fish, uh, sea turtles, sharks, and so on, a lot of it comes from this um, light from the blitz from the camera. So when you are in the deep water, there aren't so many highlights. Some fish are have neon colors or glow in, in, in the dark. But all these highlights that you usually do when you draw, especially with flowers and so on, when you have the sunlight directly on them, you will get more highlights than when you color things underwater. So you will have light areas, but not highlights, highlights, highlights. Um, so I'm not going to be doing a lot of highlights, highlights, highlights here uh, in this underwater drawing. But I do want some areas to be more light than others on plants and fishes and so on. But not too much. I really like to have some realism in my colorings. Uh, so I like it when it gets... Yeah, well, realistic when it looks like it would do in real life, as if I had taken a photo. But of course you can't take photos of Atlantis. <laughs> so you can see here that I'm adding on the left side of the plants because this is the side that faces the light coming down here in the middle, which means uh, that I will have to use the kelp green to enhance the darker side more and then fill in with the olive green and of course you can layer and layer but you can also just use a couple of layers before you press harder. And since this is a beginner tutorial, I might as well just admit I'm not one for layering 12 or 15 times. Uh, also because I'm not that light handed, if you could say that. And also because I like my colors to pop off the page. I really do. If you have seen some of my other videos, especially my um, coloring of flowers from the Maria Trolle books, you will know this. And I really, really like colors that pop off the page. Um, I can link to a to beginner tutorial from Twilight Garden by Maria Trolle, where I colored uh, some flowers and um, I think it was a spade and a watering can. And you can see from the flowers there, especially the peonies, that they really do pop off the page. So a bit more pressure here with the dark side. Reminds me of Star Wars and the dark side of the force. No, just the dark side of um, <laughs> of the plants, the shadow side. Uh, 
And yes, even though fish, these uh, fish are quite small, they also leave some, some shadow. And then you can also, when you're quite finished, add the last of the shadowing with a darker color, like I usually do. And that would be the 90% French gray, I think. I usually use this for green colors. It matches quite good to add that extra shadow. But you could also use, um, in some cases, espresso uh, or dark umber, especially with, with trees and um, sepia. And then if you have more bluish tones, I would rather use the 90% warm gray or cool gray. But the darker ones there. And if you have lighter colors, I would use hmm, some of the 70 or 50% grays. Oops, I almost forgot here. There are just so many plants here. It's hard to keep track on them. And so many fish here. But I hope that you uh, get the picture here. That the right side, the shadow side, if you could call it that, darker and towards the light, lighter. And some of you might think, why is she calling this a beginner tutorial? Well, she, I, do this because it's not that difficult to color in Hannah Carlson's books. I know they look overwhelming, especially a page like this compared to, um, and then I would have to find a more simple page. So I'm looking this one, perhaps more simple, just two faces opposite each other, um, or this one looks like a she shell with diamonds or crystals on it. Um, but if you have watched some of my other beginner tutorials, you know that I always uh, begin with dividing the page in smaller bits. So the background first, then the plants, and then the corals, then one type of fish, another type of fish, uh, then these jars, then crystals or diamonds, and so on. So you have to just divide it into smaller parts and then do one part after the other, and then eventually the whole page will be colored. Um, so. so now I will just color the rest with music and you can just watch.
So now I just need to lay some extra shadow and I will be using this, the 90% French Grey PC1076. I find that this is a really good color to add just a little extra of this um, shadow. And it goes extremely well with these um, darker green colors. Oh, there are a lot of fish here. And some extra shadow down here where these corals just add some more shadow to the bottom part of the plants. And also this larger fish here. And I can't do it here because I haven't colored the fish yet, so I will have to um, to wait. see this leaf is almost completely in shadow so I'll just add some darker color to it and also here And there and now it's done so I will just color the rest of uh, the leaves that I want to be dark before I continue showing you what else to do as you can see I have now finished with the plants and you can also see that the coloring of the plants has sort of divided the page into smaller bits. So here we have some uh, corals, we have fish, and we have one of these huge jars here. And as a little crab down here, you can see that. Also um, a vase, I think, here. We have some... Uh, seashells here a sea star uh, more fish and snails 
and a lot of interesting things. So now I think that I will begin coloring these corals. And I have uh, chosen two different sets of colors. I have chosen this one. This is the magenta PC 930. And uh, this one, pomegranate PC 195 for some of the corals. And the other color combination will be this one, neon pink. PC 1038 and the process red PC 994 and the hot pink PC 993. So uh, these will be the color combinations I will be using for the corals. I think that the neon colors uh, of uh, the Prisma color, you don't usually use them, but I think that when we are coloring underwater life and coral reefs, um, they are an obvious choice here to lighten things up a little bit and spice it up. So let us begin. So I will begin with this cluster of corals. And uh, of course, I'm using something for my inspiration. I have my computer open and I have found a picture, a photo, uh, from a coral reef in the Red Sea. So I have drawn some inspiration from some of the uh, corals from this uh, picture and they are exactly these uh, pinks and uh, darker red colors and there are also some peachy orange colors, but I will not be using them for this one. So, when you look at corals, they can have many, many beautiful colors. And um, it's a bit different from uh, coral to coral, where the dark and the light colors are. But usually, the magenta will, in this case, be the lighter color they run from the edges and down the middle of these corals and then they get darker at the bottom so i will just use the magenta to um, sort of fill in here And then I will use the pomegranate to fill in the blanks, so to speak. And you can also use it to um, shade a bit. I think that all of this will be a bit darker than the rest of it. And also here, you can see here that this coral sort of shades a little bit for the next so. And then from the bottom. But I also want that you can be able to see the difference between these two. So I will just do the bottom here. Oh, and this, this is one of the things that I must say, it's a bit annoying in this book. Um, it's these double pages. They really um, kind of ruins the drawing here. It's going to be difficult, if not impossible, to color this one. Um, 
and you can also see I have some glue here in the darker places small spots of glue from the binding so um, I can't just color it all I will just have to make do uh, like this it's a bit of a shame with this binding So and then switch to the magenta again. And there we just have a little coral to cover so I think I will make this area a little bit darker and then again here I will just have to um, make do so um it was more easy with the 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 pastel background here but it won't be easy here with the coloring pencils i can tell you that much and now all that's left is is to um just layer and layer and this will be colored as you can see here it's finished and then we just need to add a little bit of some shadow and for this I'm going to be using this the 90% cool gray PC 1067 and I'm just going to add some shadow here and here And then this coral sort of shades or cast some shadow on the other. So I will just also add a bit of a shadow here. And then also down here. It's really difficult here on the middle and here. And a little bit about the fish here. And then of course when this one shade from the other here and here and here also a bit here and here mm. oh i don't think i think that was it And that's it. That was the red coral. But we also have some uh, pink corals that I wanted to color. And for this I would be using the neon pink and the hot pink also and the processed red. So I think that 
I want to color these, this little cluster of uh, reefs and uh, cor corals on the reef. And um, I think that the process red is the darkest of the colors. So I want this to be at the bottom. I don't know what these small things are, not yet anyway, and then perhaps it just goes up here, but I will have to find out what these are. I don't know if they are rocks, I don't think that they look like rocks. So then I will um, switch to the neon pink, but I will just sharpen it. There are such small details that you have to have a sharp pencil. And this is a really nice color. I really like it. I like the fact that these Corals get this nice neon pink color. It really lights up. This underwater scene. And then a little bit of hot pink to combine the colors. I just want to look what it looks like. Yeah, I think we need a bit more process red in this picture. So more process red. pink. And then I will color just on top of the process red with the neon pink to blend and enhance the color. Because I don't want these corals to be muted. I want them to um, really shine and pop on the page. So as you can see here, we get a really nice color, popping color, bright color here. And then just the hot pink again to combine. And then we have some nice pink corals. 
a little bit of shade still with the cool grey, just a tiny bit here at the bottom and here and here. And here, and you can see here, just where they overlap. And they are done. So, as you can see, the rest of the corals have been colored, both red and pink. And you can choose to, like I did here, just use neon pink and process red or perhaps do some just process red and hot pink. So you can mix between the three colors in the pink corals. And then you can also see I have added shadow in different places. So this is the end of part one of the this beginner tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you will like and subscribe to my channel and then you will get notified perhaps if you uh, click on the little bell you will get notified when I upload the beginner tutorial part two of this coral reef. So thank you for watching. Happy coloring. Bye.